back to the opportunistic trader it's been an active day speaking with a lot of great people and now we're joined by mark fisher and mark uh, wrote a book called the logical trader where he uh talked about a method of trading called the acd method and he's going to be talking <coughs> to us about that today uh welcome mark how's it going good how are you mike great looking forward to the weekend so just to follow up for last week Obviously, the S&P trade is yeah, it's about 10 handles against us from where the setup was September. I'm still not convinced we're not, you know, there for September. So we're going to give it another week and see how we go in, in that. Uh, natural gas and, and energy has all been buffeted by the hurricane. So we've basically been on the sidelines until now because, of, you know, you, you can't trade a hurricane. That's it's just too much weather. You know, that's, you know, you know, if it was a category four, the market would have skyrocketed category one. Initially came off and our crew came back with the products haven't. Um, I still think that all the product spreads are the way to go in terms of the, the risk reward. And I know you want to talk about ACD, so I'll just I'll give you like a little bit of introduction to it. Yeah, please. So basically. Back when I first started on this in the silver floor, I kept seeing that the opening range tended to be the high or low, the absolute high or low, the opening of the pit session for like more than, way more than it should be. Like for instance, that the opening would be the high or low and the market would never even trade back there during the day. And by, you know, any type of efficient market theory, that should not happen. You know, there's no way that the opening range should be <clears throat> the absolute high or low, you know, 10, 15% of the, of the time. And that also, by the way, happens in all volatile markets which led me to write my my master's paper at Wharton on this opening range um, breakout system, which a lot of people follow today and have, have done different variations of it. And basically what it is, is that you want to basically be on board in volatile days and you want to use the opening range as your support or resistance fat line. And then basically you're looking to buy a break out of that range. The trick of it is, a lot of days there's no volatility. If there's no volatility, you're going to get screwed. And a lot of days you got to, you know, you have to be patient because you never know when the pushes come, you know, to, to push stuff up. And over time, we've changed the model, not changed, but adapted the model. So it's not just price, but it's price by and time. So basically, we not only trade like we're not just going to get, you know, long at a price. We're going to get long at. more X, the price has been there for a while. Longer. So it's, we don't take just price into consideration while we take time. And typically in volatile markets, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be crude oil, it could be um, grains, it could be stocks, it could be Amazon. You know, as long as the market's volatile, you'll make money doing this. So it's question, sorry to interrupt you. So you're saying taking the opening range, what, tell, you know, let's start from the basics. What is an opening range when, let's okay. take a stock, for example, that closes at four o'clock and opens the next day. What's the opening range? The opening range would be the New York Stock Exchange opening range time at 9.30, unless <clears throat> that stock's primary market is not the New York Stock Exchange. So for instance, if you were going to trade Vodafone, you know, the primary market for that is London, that's going to open at three o'clock in the morning. It's wherever the primary market is for that for that for that instrument. So if you can trade Japanese yen, you're going to do when the when the when when the you know when the yen opens up at night at like eight nine o'clock at night. Right. If it's a dollar, it's going to be a different time. If it's going to be and then so do you take the first half hour window and consider that the opening range or the first some, minute bar? So I, I to be you could use the first five minutes, the first ten minutes, the first twenty minutes, first half hour. As long as you're consistent and don't jump around day by day. Right. So let's take like let's just use Apple stock as an example. Like today, let's just say it opened uh, at two twenty six, and then in the first bar, it traded from two twenty six to two twenty seven. What would that is that? And that and when you say first bar, how long is that bar? Let's say it's a ten minute bar. Okay. So, so basically, I'd be looking. I'd be looking for a breakout uh, above two twenty seven mm -hmm. or break down below two twenty six, and I'd be adding to it. So you okay. wouldn't place a trade until it broke through one of those uh, ranges. And if it broke through that range, you would then uh, look for the market to continue in that direction. But I would look for it, to, but, but the problem is you don't just buy it, at, let's say 226 to 227, you don't just buy it at 227.01. There's a, there's, a, there's a factor that you take, which is based on the average true, uh, true range of the stock. You would add to that range to, before you bought it. So for instance, <clears throat> making it hypothetically, let's assume Apple's 
Apple's A range is a, a value is let's say a dollar. It's not, but I'm just making that up. Right. Okay. You wouldn't you wouldn't, you wouldn't start buying Apple till it traded two twenty eight or till it broke two twenty in this case two twenty five. Okay. And so if the typical range, so you're saying if the typical range on a day for Apple was a dollar, which it's not, but if it was, you would- no, no. The average, true, you take the average true range multiplied by 20%. So let's assume if the average true range in Apple was, you know, $5 and you took 20%, it would be, you know, a dollar. If the average right. true range in Apple is dollars and the average true range also includes overnight gaps and everything. So, you know, it's not just the instant day, it's also the gap overnight. Okay. And then where would you look to say you're wrong and stop yourself out of the position? So like, let's say you're selling the Apple because today's an example, Apple's down a few dollars. We actually did open at the higher end to 2680 or so. So let's say we were to have sold uh, on, you know, this method, where would we say that we're wrong and, you know, in a choppy market, uh, stop ourselves out? The top of the opening range. Okay. And then is this something that we would hold for multiple days or? No. No, in terms of what I just gave you, would be a strict day trade day trading system. Okay, that makes sense. And then, I guess it also applies for if you're looking at things on a longer term. If you then take it and don't apply it to intraday, but you look at it at a multiple day chart, and you can apply this to multiple days, right? Correct. Yeah. But you need volatility. If the market just goes ahead and sits there like all day long, like most of the time it does in natural gas. When stocks that don't move, you're going to lose money because you're going to get chopped up. You need markets that, you know, for instance, the pot stocks. Those have been great to trade, you know, because of the volatility in the stocks, the intraday volatility. Yes, there has been tremendous volatility in that. <coughs> That's actually yeah. another topic. Uh, you know, it's funny. People have been talking about how, uh, you know, crypto was last year's big, you know, craze and this year it's pot stocks. Right. Although the pot stocks have, are going to eventually, you know, have some value, right? Because you're going to have. <clears throat> You know, I just wanted to give everybody a little update also. At 12.01, it looks like it came out that uh, President Trump reportedly told advisors to proceed with $200 billion in tariffs. And so the S&P has sold off about uh, seven or eight points, and the Nasdaq's down about 30 now. Uh, S&P's down four on the day right here. So, you know, that's the headline bombs that we've been talking about. And so S&P's uh, off a few points. <coughs> right. Uh, so what's your take um, on energy with the storm? Are you yeah, thinking... Just remember, I still think this up and Labor Day is setting up properly in the S&P. Yeah, so well, like you started out, you know, this is, we're basically at the exact level that that short was put on. And, you know, you were no, talking about a few about, weeks out. We put, we put it on at about 2895. I think the market's trading, we're at 2900. Yeah, 2900. Yeah, it's about five. Yeah, it's nothing. You know, it's amazing. We're Larry and I were talking about it. We've, it, it's been beginning of June was the last time the S&P had more than a 1% day. I mean, uh, intraday volatility, it's, uh, you know, we haven't had many large uh, intraday moves. Right. So again, for to trade ACD, you need a, you need to identify volatile, volatile instruments. The more volatile, the better. It goes against human nature because people don't like to trade volatility, they get scared. But volatility actually works in, in your favor. You need markets that have low bid offer spreads. If the bid offer spreads too wide, it's going to kill you. And you also need to you know, and, that, and that's it. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And then what market is there one specific market that you found that this uh, works better in opposed to other markets or it really just comes down to volatility? It works better in individual stocks and in commodities. It works worse in, in equities, in indexes, because indexes are more of a smooth moving a smooth average anyway. So it's harder to trade. It definitely works better in individual stocks and in futures and maybe even in currencies than it does, let's say, in the dollar index or in the S&P or NASDAQ, which are more broad-based indexes. The more broad-based, the worse it works. What opening range do you typically look at? Uh, is it a five-minute bar, 10-minute bar, 30-minute bar, hour bar? No, no more. It, it ranges from five minutes to a half hour, never more than, never less than five, never more than a half hour. Are there any sort of signals that you look at that you see, even if the trade's been moving in your favor, that it looks like the trade might be done time to reverse? No. And then would you look to take it off in the last half hour bar or is there an optimal time to take off the trade? I take it off on the close. Okay. Uh, let me just take a look no. here. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, that's a lot of good information. And, you know, what we're going to do, typically we've had a lot of questions coming in over the week uh, being emailed. So what I'll do is next week when we come on, we'll ask you some of those questions and, uh, you know, follow up with this talk. But, you know, we'll keep a close eye on the markets. Uh, thanks for that uh, insight.
and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Good. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, Mark. Bye.